Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for the year-end episode of Life and Surround. 2020 is coming to a close and I'm sure that we're all grateful for that and um, hopefully 2021 will be a better year. It has been a pretty good year for surround music and the purpose of this video is I'm going to run through all of the surround releases that I can remember that I actually um, found this year and enjoyed and maybe some that I didn't enjoy. We're gonna cover about 35 titles and I'm gonna use this here thread on uh, Quadraphonic Quad 2020 surround releases. I'm gonna put the link to this thread in the description. This is a super useful thing that a member going by Haiku Bass does every year. He keeps a running list of popular titles. So um, some jazz and some classical doesn't make it onto this list. In fact, just about none. Uh, so there are jazz and classical titles mostly in DSD download form that he doesn't track, but um, popular stuff, pop music, rock, uh, classic, classic rock, progressive, uh, some Miles Davis, you know, if it is popular, he, he does track it. And so let's get on with this. We have about 35 titles to cover, and uh, I'm gonna try to blow through them pretty quickly. Uh, again, so we're using Haiku Bass's 2020 surround release thread, and I already made some notes over here, so I'm just gonna go off of those. Early in the year, Stephen Wilson re-released Grace for Drowning, and though I already had the standalone Blu-ray, I chose to go ahead and support this release because I like having CDs for my car. And so this was a two CD Blu-ray set and um, it was affordable, little digipack type of thing. So was very grateful for that. And uh, you're gonna hear a lot of Stephen Wilson uh, this year, mostly from remixing other people's works. All right, then from Dutton Vocalion, we had uh, the OJs survival and family reunion two for one SACD. Lovingly, I call those twofers. Uh, Dutton Vocalion, I'm gonna leave a link to uh, their site. You should go check them out. They rescue classic quads mixed back in the 70s and put them on SACD. So you get a lossless, uh, very high definition optical format for these uh, classic quad masters. Also from Dutton, we have Earth, Wind, and Fire, Spirit, and Way of the World, two for one, SACD, and um, just fantastic. <laughs> it's Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, the only one I don't have at this point because Audio Fidelity put out a couple several years ago is the long out of print Sony SACD, what's that one even called, Gratitude? Something like that. I don't have that. So if you have a spare sitting around and want to send it to me, <laughs> that'd be a great New Year's gift. Anyway, um, from surroundmusic.one, we have Marcus Reuter's Truce. Uh, very avant-garde, but in my opinion, uh, he and his colleagues on that record managed to make it hooky and accessible and um, fairly melodic. Uh, great mix from Jan Prince. So I definitely recommend um, going over to surroundmusic.one and checking out Truths. Uh, the works up on surroundmusic.one are fairly prolific at this point, um, almost to the point where it's like too much for me to, to sift through. I should uh, spend a day just you know streaming what's there to see if something catches my interest. But I did enjoy Truths. And again, I'm gonna be putting a bunch of links in the description, so surroundmusic.one will be there. We have Manic from Halsey. I found this by accident. Um, basically fell in love with Halsey and went on to Tidal just to try to stream her latest record. Had no idea that it would be in Atmos, uh, but to my infinite joy, it is, and it's a great mix. It's a great album. I don't know of anywhere else that you can listen to it in surround than on Tidal, and you have to have like their premium package, whatever that's called. For me, that's pretty cheap uh, because I get a pretty significant military discount. It's basically the cost of one album per month, and um, I'm on Tidal like all the time. 
uh, there is a, um, a link at the bottom of Haiku Bass's list that shows all of the Atmos albums that he's aware of to this point. So that's also very helpful. But I'm on Tidal a lot, just checking stuff out in stereo as well. All right, moving right along. We have Miles Davis, Live Evil. <laughs> I mean, it's a double uh, Sony Japan SACD, and it does have its rough moments just from like the way it was recorded. It's very raw, very live. Um, it just kicks all kinds of ass, but it is like not very accessible. It is challenging music, a lot like Bitches Brew in a live setting. Um, but just overjoyed again that another classic quad master has been redeemed and brought to us in lossless high definition optical um, and I love Sony Japan's um, packaging like they uh, just take immaculate immaculate care all right we have in absentia porcupine tree reissue and uh, so this has been out on DVD audio for quite some time since like 2002 or so uh, they do reuse the Elliott Shiner 5.1 mix which is just fantastic they corrected an out of phase issue with two of the channels and so the bottom end comes through much more strongly and uh, I did a whole review on this I'm also going to um, note where I've done reviews earlier in the year for a lot of these albums okay let me see which ones did I miss so far I did a review for Truce I did a review for Manic and I've done a review for In Absentia um, in my opinion they did fix the issues that they needed to and so this is an extremely enjoyable blu-ray it has um, some very entertaining visual content so I do recommend tracking down the corrected blu-ray they initially released this set uh, with an uncorrected blu-ray so the phase issue was still there but um, pretty much if you pick it up retail at this point you're gonna get the corrected disc alright the weekend uh, after hours again this is an Atmos album that as far as I know you can only find on Tidal uh, weekend is um, kind of a guy doing like 80s retro type of music uh, it does it really well uh, Everybody that I've had over, like, you know, I'll put it on for guests, and it's just, like, feel-good music. It is hooky. It is memorable. Uh, Blinding Lights, I think, is, like, the ginormous hit that, like, you can't hardly get away from right now. So, again, between Halsey and The Weeknd, we have two, like, smash hit albums current that um, have received very, very well-done surround treatment. And so... That's a very good thing. Um, some people might not be excited that you can only get it on Tidal, but I mean, maybe they'll put it out on a Blu-ray someday. But I'm totally glad that I stumbled across that. Again, uh, wasn't seeking out an Atmos album per se, just happened upon it and really, really do love it. Mary Fall, From the Dark Side of the Moon. Um, she said in an interview that I did with her this year that Dark Side is like one of those like so treasured albums that like pretty much anybody can do it and do it in their own way and it's gonna work and I disagree like um, I love the Flaming Lips and I don't like their version of Dark Side but Mary made Dark Side her own along with um, help from Mark Doyle and uh, their other co-producer his name escapes my memory I apologize but um, I did an interview with her and Mark and also a review of the album so definitely recommend going back and checking those out this may be the 5.1 blu-ray of the year i mean it's just so well done um bob clear mountain mix that was like salvaged from obscurity uh many many thanks to mark doyle in particular for making sure that this mix got released to us and i hope that the blu-ray is doing very well Hey Mary, I hope you're doing really well too. And uh, so let's move move along. Um, Alan Parsons Project, Ammonia Avenue, standalone Blu-ray, and you could also get it in a mega set. I don't really like the fidelity of this one. Um, it does improve for like what would be the back half of the LP. And I do recommend picking this up. 
Uh, if you can find the standalone affordably, it's worth it just for like the last few tracks, uh, which are just killer. I'm just not impressed with the fidelity of like the first four or five tracks, particularly the background vocals somehow are scratchy and like way too loud. And that's unusual for um, Mr. Parsons. Normally his mixes and masters are just amazing. So hopefully we will get more Alan Parsons project, um, iRobot, Pyramid, you know, whatever <laughs> is left in the catalog, and hopefully there will be no fidelity issues. All right, so we have script for Adjuster's Tear from Marillion. This was mixed by um, Andy Bradfield and Avril McIntosh, and uh, they did a killer job fidelity-wise. It's not a very interesting surround mix. And I did uh, a review of that with their input, and so I um, definitely recommend that you check that out. If you can find the set affordably, it's packed with like super cool early Marillion content, and they did a great job fidelity-wise. Uh, you could just listen to it in stereo, uh, but the 5.1 mix does give added fidelity by isolating the vocal and a couple of other elements in the center channel very effectively taking work away from the front left and right at the very least. So yeah, listen to it in 5.1, just don't expect to be um, wowed with the uh, surround of that one. Gigaton by Pearl Jam. Gigaton? Gigaton? Uh, I like this album. In fact, I like it more every time I hear it. You can only hear it in surround on Apple TV right now. So that prompted me to actually go out and get an Apple TV device. Um, and also an Amazon Fire Stick just to like try them out because on both you can download the, the Apple TV or Apple TV Plus app, whatever it's called. So then I purchased the digital album and it's like a visual experience. Uh, I dig it. I'm not the biggest Pearl Jam fan ever and, and so I'm not like as familiar with their catalog as some of you might be. But in my opinion, what I do know of them it is very strong for a later era album. I feel like it um, is extremely effective. I like the songs. Um, I dig the vibe. Uh, I dig the themes. The Atmos mix is really well done. So again, that's not on Blu-ray at this point. You have to just stream it. And you know that could be a trend <laughs> in the world these days. Uh, Scar is Born. Uh, what was that group's name? I didn't like it very much. Uh, Beautiful Curse. Um, hopefully Beautiful Curse keeps doing uh, content. Uh, I just wasn't thrilled with it. It didn't grab me. So it's, up, it's over on Bandcamp. There are a lot of worthy artists over on Bandcamp. So um, I'll also give some links for that. Empath by Devin Townsend. This was a deluxe edition of Empath and came with two Blu-rays, totally packed with content. And uh, one of the features is Empath in 5.1. He did a really excellent mix. I love about half the album and I'm okay-ish with the other half. Uh, I prefer some works from Devin Townsend Project, but this is a really cool album. There are massive fans of this album and the mix is great. And he says that he's going to be delving into Atmos next. So good on him. Appreciate his enthusiasm for Surround. Live Baby Live uh, by NXS. I think I picked up the Ultra HD Blu-ray, the 4K, just to make sure that it came with Atmos. But I'm pretty sure that the normal Blu-ray also comes with Atmos. So I'm not even sure which one I got. Maybe I got the 4K just for future proofing. Um, not a very exciting mix from an Atmos perspective, but it does make you feel like you're at the gig, and the fidelity is superb, and um, it's a classic in excess show that has been um, brought to us losslessly, uh, optically, so I'm just happy about that. It's just not killer from a surround perspective. Kansas, The Absence of Presence, uh, another contender for 5.1 Blu-ray of the year, in my opinion. Um, solid rock album that I enjoyed way more than I thought I might, uh, given that there's only two original members of the band in the lineup, but the other 
members, including songwriting contributors, um, really, I think, struck um, that classic uh, Kansas vibe. They wrote material that really works for the band. Uh, some absolutely standout tracks that will keep me coming back, including uh, the title track and Memories Down the Line. Um, it's solid. I um, enjoyed it way more than I thought I would, and I like it more every time I hear it, so that's a good sign for me. Bebop Deluxe, Axe Victim. This one is totally cool. I wish that um, their label would put out Blu-rays, but what they're doing is they're putting out DVD videos. So you do get some lossy compression, so it is pretty good. Um, to my ears, the fidelity is, is pretty good. The mix is what I would call adequate. You mostly have like rhythm guitar parts and background vocals in the surrounds from what I could hear. Um, leaving the uh, drums, bass, uh, main guitar lines, main vocals, uh, mostly up front. That does work. Um, does come across to me a little bit like set it and forget it. But it's serviceable. It works. And the album, in my opinion, is killer. It reminds me a lot of Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie, kind of in its themes and just the vibe, with um, some way, way, way uh, more um, accomplished guitar shredding. So it is guitar oriented. The on-screen graphic of the skull guitar with the moving strings and the, uh, the moving mandible um, is kind of a nice touch. Uh, if you can find the box set that it comes in affordably, go for it. I like this one and Sunburst Finish. Those are the two that I've picked up so far. I auditioned Bebop Deluxe albums in stereo first, just to make sure that the music grabs me. And so far, these are the two um, that I've appreciated enough to pick up the set. Let me see. Anatole. Into the Black Hole. This is a 5.1 download available from Bandcamp. The style may not be everyone's cup of tea, but um, she's a very talented multi-instrumentalist and works with guest vocalists. I look forward to what is coming in the future from her, and I like this 5.1 album uh, well enough. A couple of the tracks lose me a little bit, sort of in the, the rappy sections, but um, hey, you know, she didn't make this album for me, she made it for herself and she did an amazing job. Claire, you are an amazing talent and uh, looking forward to more work from you. Um, hope that it has a surround uh, track and um, like to see you do something like audio visual. That would be just super great. All right, really enjoyed uh, getting in touch with Anatole's Into the Black Hole this year. Chorus Line, uh, another Dutton Vocalion SACD release. Uh, if you're into kind of like, you know, 70s era um, Broadway musical type show numbers, uh, it's really well done. It sounds great and the uh, songs are fun. I just need to get a little bit more in touch with it. I've only heard it once, uh, casual listening. I liked it. Gorgian Knot by Big Fat Band. I love Big Fat Band. They have several releases in their past, uh, both lossy and lossless, like on DVD audio, DVD video. It's big band music and uh, extremely well done, extremely well mixed. And um, this one offers not only Atmos, but also RO3D on Blu-ray. Uh, a little pricey, I think I found it for just under 40 bucks and the cheapest that I have found it right now is on the band's site, and so I will provide the link. I encourage you to check it out. Let me see. The Pineapple Thief Versions of the Truth. This is Elad's album of the year, and I can see why. Killer songs, killer mixing by Bruce. I hear that he's going to be delving into Atmos too, so I am looking forward to his future output. Uh, they brought Gavin Harrison into the band, and this is his second or third effort with them. And you can tell that he's just like fully integrated now, involved in the creative process and working very intricately with uh, the musicality of the group. It's great. I love it. Well done, Bruce. Cheers. All right, moving right along, we have Quadio by the Doobie Brothers this time. Another killer Rhino Records release. 
Uh, this one uh, was a labor of love for the producer, very kind gentleman, and um, it took uh, longer than expected to come out, but it is just killer. Four classic Doobie Brothers albums and um, classic quad mixes that have been preserved onto Blu-ray losslessly for us and uh, in my opinion four really cool records. I'm familiar with some of the Doobie Brothers hits from the era but in my opinion the draw is the album tracks. Very strong albums. Goat's Head Soup by the Rolling Stones. Ugh. Avoid. That's all I'm gonna say. Avoid. Book a Shade, Dear Future Self. Uh, I need more listens, but I remember it being extremely well mixed, and I'm into what they do. Uh, electronic stuff. Um, it's on Blu-ray. It's lossless. Check it out. I uh, think it's Atmos. Maybe Atmos and Aro. Can't remember. Anyway, love it. Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets. Uh, concert Blu-ray. I like it. It's a celebration of early Floyd stuff that um, needed to be celebrated. And uh, so it's Nick Mason and some buddies. And they do a killer job. Well filmed, well played, well mixed, well produced. Uh, really enjoy it. The Santana debut, quad, classic quad, uh, put out by Sony Japan on SACD. I love it. And I did a review, I did a co review with Wes from High Res Edition, so check that out. Hack it live, um, Hammersmith. Selling England by the pound. <sighs> Great sounding on all my systems. Some people say that it's still a little bass bloated like past Steve Hackett releases, and I just disagree. I mean, it sounds great on my systems. So, um, a Stephen Wilson mix, and it is the way that I want concerts to sound. So, hopefully, if you've picked it up or if you choose to, it'll sound great on your systems as well. If not, Maybe turn down the subs a little bit, and you should be in good shape. All right, we are coming toward the end of the list. Thanks for sticking in there, and I hope you're having a good time. Fish, Velschmerz. Uh, there's much to love here. A very, very, very great mix from Avril McIntosh and Andy Bradfield. They absolutely killed this mix. It is amazing. Full marks, 10 out of 10. Uh, I feel that the album drags on a bit, which is why I wouldn't rate it as like 5.1 Blu-ray of the year. Uh, I wish that he had had uh, a producer with the ability to edit him a little bit, just to make this um, effort a little bit more concise. But what is here is very strong stuff. Um, it's a very good late era Fish record, and I do recommend it. It's a little pricey. so. Great mix. All right, moving on. We have Steel Wheels Live from the Rolling Stones. Um, very, very nice that this has been preserved. A classic concert from like my childhood, at least it's classic for me. Um, unimpressive from a surround perspective, but just from a historical perspective, uh, worth picking up if you're into this era of the band. Us and Them by Roger Waters. I don't really dig it. Um, I did a review where you can learn all about my reasons, but I don't really dig it. Vienna from Ultravox comes in a deluxe set, uh, only DVD video available, so you're going to get DTS, lossy, uh, but sounds reasonably good enough to my ears, and it is a very impressive 5.1 Stephen Wilson mix. So. Um, I was unaware of this album and um, any of the singles. Uh, it completely passed me by in my childhood. And uh, so it was like kind of a blast to an unknown past for me. And uh, it's quickly becoming uh, vintage classic 80s for me. Uh, it comes with a concert on CD that is worth checking out. Seeds of Love by Tears for Fears. Very, very, very cool album. Um, an artistic shift from songs from The Big Chair, 
uh, in my opinion, a little bit more soulful, uh, personal, and it does receive a killer Steven Wilson 5.1 mix. So if you can find it um, at a price point you are happy with, go for it. And I did a review on it, so I uh, encourage you to check that out as well. John Lennon, uh, Gimme Some Truth, Deluxe, like um, Super Duper Ultimate Remix Edition, um, Atmos. Uh, I would review it for you if I could, but it has not shown up from Music Vaults, even though I ordered it back in August or September. So um, they have not canceled my order, and it is listed as confirmed. So I'm just going to see what happens. They keep claiming that they're having a supply issue, which I don't understand. It's been like months and months and months. So we'll see what happens. If somebody wants to like just mail me the Blu-ray and so I can review it and then I'll mail it back to you, like that could work. Otherwise, who knows if I'll ever uh, get to hear it. Abraxas, Santana, their follow-up to their debut. Again, a classic quad that has been rescued by Sony Japan and put on one of their immaculate, immaculately packaged 7-inch series SACDs. No, the SACDs are not 7 inches. The packaging is. The SACDs are normal SACDs. <laughs> Hybrid, in fact. Um, just killer. Just killer. And again, I did a co-review with Wes from High Res Edition, so check it out. Delicate Sound of Thunder, um, Pink Floyd, it originally only came in the later years set, but they decided to release it standalone. I can't swear that the standalone Blu-ray has all of the features that the uh, later years Blu-ray did, although um, digging into some comments, um, it's possible. But either way, far, far cheaper than picking up the later years set if you're not into the other content that comes in the set. Just pick up Delicate Sound of Thunder. Uh, Remixed, re-edited, uh, restored. It's widescreen. It is just freaking golden. It's wonderful. If you're into that era of Pink Floyd Live, it is a cannot fail. All right, we've come to the end of the list now. Aeolian. Ian O'Doherty. I hope I'm saying your name right. Correct me if I'm wrong. It would be really nice to know how you say your name. Uh, you may know him from Ian Cook Band fame, Up Hollow, oh geez, um, several projects. He's out of the um, Denver, Colorado area, I believe. Very prolific, very talented, um, very eclectic and diverse in the styles that he offers surround fans, and he is really great at mixing. <laughs> So I haven't heard the entire six album set that he's released um, under the Aeolian title, but um, what I've heard is really great and I'm looking forward to sinking my teeth into it. And you can expect a review with his insights. So I encourage you to check out Haiku Bass's uh, thread for every album that I did get to, around 35 this year. Um, there are at least one or two that I didn't, either because just lack of time, um, lack of being, like, you know, drawn in and interested enough, but I um, encourage you, check out this thread. There may be some artists that you're familiar with that you're interested in, and also just the ones that I have been able to uh, vouch for. I hope that you uh, have found something enjoyable to track down from this video. I hope that you have a very happy New Year's Eve tonight. And once you've recovered, that you have a wonderful new year, um, both personally and in terms of music. Uh, 2020 has been rough, but a year of self-discovery and growth for me um, have added uh, some beautiful friendships, have strengthened and deepened some uh, existing friendships, both old and new. And um, I look forward to just being able to devour some wonderful music in the coming year and to share that experience with you and to um, and just to enjoy our beloved hobby together. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for all of your support. And I uh, look forward to more surround music and life and surround in the coming year. So best regards. And until next time, live life in surround.